everybody's old barn and shed has granddad's old chestnut canoe in it. So mainly what we do here is, is we, we bring them back to life. This is a chestnut. We love getting them like this. This is the way we love them. Wood's good, so we will we'll finish that up. We'll stretch the canvas and we'll make that like new. I often say, you've probably heard about, you know, animal rescue places, dog rescue, whatever. We're a canoe rescue place. We like to rescue old chestnut canoes and bring them back to life. Uh, my name is Norman Beth. We're sitting by, on the banks of the famous Miramichi River uh, at my, what was once my grandparents' home. Uh, so we moved here to look after my grandfather and I inherited this home and, uh, and I restored it. And uh, uh, it, it backs on, as I say, the Miramichi River. This little body of water we see behind us is what we call a bogan. Uh, it's kind of an interesting term. Uh, if you Google it, you'll find that Bogan is an inlet, uh, but it's only used on the Miramichi. I was born here, um, always, you know, on the river, fishing, whatever, developed a, a real uh, passion for canoes at an early age. Uh, we used them to paddle. I used to canoe race. I paddled in the canoe nationals and, and so on, but really had a passion for canoes. Started, built my first cedar strip canoe in a, in, in a little garage here in my 20s. Yeah, I, I've always said that I was a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde. Um, lived here in Doaktown all my life, um, commuted from here to Fredericton, worked in Fredericton. I'm a chartered accountant. I, I, I was a, uh, got a PhD in finance and accounting, was on the business faculty for 30 years and did the other things you've mentioned. So. I've done a lot of other things, but, but I always said when I left Fredericton and drove over the portage from the, from, uh, the, uh, over the portage from the St. John River system, the Miramichi system, um, I always changed from Dr. Jekyll to Mr. Hyde or, or whatever it is. Uh, this is my route. I always say if I get home and I got a few splinters in my hands and some sawdust in my hair, then that, that's been a good day. In June of 2019, people say I retired, but I say I rewired. I'm on rewirement, and my rewirement became taking my lifelong passion and, and of spending my days doing that. We start with cedar and we make ribs, ribs and planking. Okay, so these are ribs. Those are planking, that's planking. We steam them, we'll show you that in a minute. And this is actually how we, how we steam, uh, steam the ribs as well. It goes up from here into a steam box and uh, steam them for a couple of hours and we've taken ribs, we've tied them in a knot. It's this. That's the process of attaching planking to the rib. And so when you're done, this is attached to that. And the reason the steel bands are there is because, of the, because you can see where the, the tacks went through. They hit the steel band and the sharp edge clinched. So it, it went like this in a J. So that will not come off. Okay? And so there's about, you can imagine how many tacks there are in a canoe. So these brass tacks, this is where the expression coming, getting down to the brass tacks comes from. These, uh, these uh, about 2,500 of these, and that's what gives the canoe its strength. And then, then we put the canvas over this. There's a roll of canvas right here. This is the, this is the canvas that we stretch over the canoe. 
This is what the canvas looks like when it's stretched before it's filled. Okay, so we stretch that and then the, 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 the filler gets rubbed into that. So this is a piece that came off a canvas, a canoe that we just finished, and you can see that's what it looks like after it's filled and painted. So this is the raw canvas, and this is after it's filled and painted. They were one of the main businesses in Fredericton years ago. A chestnut building, both of them on York Street, and everything above York Street was field and woods at that point in time. The, the chestnut was like one of the main businesses in Fredericton. Um, the Chestnut Legacy started when the Chestnut Brothers interacted with First Nations, St. Mary's First Nation in particular, and saw how they made birch bark canoes. Um, and they, they modified that process and then and covered with canvas rather than birch bark. It's an example of a company that had a great product and never survived, and why? Uh, my belief is they tried to do too many different things in the end. They tried to make a hundred different styles of canoes, they tried to make fiberglass canoes, they tried to make motorboats and everything in the end. Uh, and they also never transitioned from, from a real craft economy to a, to a production economy. They tried to and they didn't. And I also believe, and this is a bit of my pet peeve, is that when the government came along and gave them a bunch of money and tried to turn them into something that they weren't, that was their downfall. And that's a one of the great New Brunswick tragedies in my view. The people who restore chestnut canoes today have an appreciation of the craft. It's more than just, uh, it's more than just something to paddle down the river with, although they paddle very well. But you've got the, you know, the beauty of the wood and the, you know, the texture and, and so on. Um, a cedar canvas canoe moves in the water. So they're kind of a you know, a, a canoe, people who really appreciate canoes and know them, and, and again, and a lot of times they have some, they have some real family history to them. And, and none of them are unique in the sense that they all have the story of this was the family canoe. I remember this canoe being at the lake. I remember my grandfather taking me fishing in this canoe. So it's all very kind of personalized stuff. There are some that are beyond repair, but those who are, are very close to being beyond repair that we can bring back to almost new, it's the most satisfying thing that we do.